today at 5 p.m. at uh, room C2, I guess. Okay, um, we will start uh, with the panel called How to Support Artists Nowadays. And uh, as we all can see right now is uh, that public culture funding bodies are playing an increasing role in the production of today's pop culture. Events as well as artists are no longer sponsored or endorsed by the industry only, but by council or state money, and many album productions are not financed by a generous record, record company, but by Kickstarter campaigns or other funding opportunities. The new task for the artists seems to be to know the funding landscapes just as well as their social media channels. Today I would like to, <coughs> sorry, today I would like to introduce you to three innovative thinkers in the expanding field of artist support and we would like to show and discuss the best possible ways of helping artists to be creative and successful. To my left, I would like to introduce you to Katja Lucker. Katja has been appointed music representative of Berlin by the Berlin Senate in January 2013, and she is leading the newly established music board Berlin. On my right side, it's Vanessa Reed. Vanessa is executive director of the PRS for Music Foundation, the UK's leading charitable funder of music across all genres. And to my very far right, you see Anna Aquistapace. Is that the right pronunciation? I, I Aquistapace. Aquistapace, I'm sorry. <laughs> Should have asked before. <laughs> it's okay. Anna is the co-founder and director of Zoo Labs in West Oakland, USA. Zoo Labs is a private recording studio as well as a think tank, I would say, uh, specialized in the development of new models to support creative careers. Before we hear more about the different funding bodies, I would like to know some more things about you, actually. How many artists uh, have we got in the audience? Okay, not many, <laughs> but some of you. Uh, Any one of you has um, applied for, for funding money ever? No, okay. Oh yeah, just in the very back. And did you succeed? Yeah? She did, okay, <laughs> cool. Maybe we talk to you later then. <laughs> okay, I would really like to start with uh, the Berlin Music Board, Katja. And uh, I would really like to uh, ask you to give us um, an overview of your work and of the work of the Music Board. Yeah, so um, as you already said, we are very new. So we started last year. Um, the idea was to, to, to build up a new way of um, supporting pop culture. Because we have in, in Berlin, we've got about 400 million euros per year to support the theaters and opera houses and stuff like this. And there was a very little, little money in the Berlin Kultur, Cultural Senate um, to support pop culture, about 200,000 to 300,000 euros per year. And um, yeah, and we um, had success. So the, the politicians in Berlin said, okay, it's a good idea because the pop culture in Berlin is becoming more famous and famous and um, also abroad. And therefore the music world was built up and we tried to find a bit more unbureaucratic ways to, um, to support artists and to support projects. And it's all about um, Berlin and pop culture. So we're not supporting the um, contemporary music, if it is only the contemporary music not combined with pop culture or the jazz or the classical music, it's really about pop culture with all genre, genres and everything you can imagine. And so we built up programs. We asked the music scene, we asked the artists. Um, we're still doing this. It's always a proce process to, to ask the people, what can we do for you? And so we invented a lot of different programs. Um, you can apply for a project, for concerts, or for a platform. We, we support a, um, a coaching platform called Music Pool, where artists can learn more about um, GEMA, uh, and stuff like this and how they can organize themselves and what we really do and this is really new in Germany um, is that we said okay we really trust our artists and every artist musician, pop culture musician living and working in Berlin doesn't matter where you're from can apply for a residency scholarship uh, thing 
And that's really cool. So we've got um, per year about 50 to 40, um, um, 14 um, scholarship people. And we support the, the artists directly. Maybe I can come to this a bit later in detail. So that's what we are doing. In a way, we're supporting projects, artists, and we are also moderating and trying to help the club scene, supporting the club commission to just to moderate between um, new neighbors, uh, clubs, investors, and stuff like this. So it's not only um, funding work, but also political work that you do. For sure, in a way, I'm not a politician, um, but um, in a way, yes, I try to to moderate. So that's really new. Um, we don't, you don't have something like this in Munich or Frankfurt or Hamburg, that you've got someone sitting there between the music scene and the politicians and the bureaucratic um, people to yeah to moderate something. That's really new. And that's me. That's sometimes very, it's a hard job. Yeah, that. It's a hard job. I think uh, you come from an event manager background, so it, m or uh, what I would hate you the word you event hate, manager. Yeah, I'm sorry for that. <laughs> what, would you call it, what would you call it yourself? I did a lot of different kinds of production. I was a producer mm -hmm. for contemporary music. Yeah. I worked with Karl-Heinz Stockhausen and, and stuff like this. Okay. So I did a big variety of different projects, curating projects, bringing people together, doing stuff between dance, video, art, and music. Yeah, yeah. So it's not event management. Okay, no. <laughs> Sorry. But do you find it particularly difficult to work with um, um, bureaucracy like you have to do? No, it's really, you know, Berlin is really a place and completely change every time from year to year. And we've got some very young people uh, sitting in the Rote Rathaus uh, with the mayor, like Björn Böning or Tatjana Kaube, working with the music board, uh, trying to, yeah, they help us and they are the, um, they give the money. And um, therefore that makes it really cool. Cool, that's really, a, it's, it's a cool work because it's, um, because they are young and they understand what it's all about. And sometimes, yeah, for sure, it's, if you go to the um, little quarters, we've got all these different quarters in Berlin, talking to them and trying to explain them how important club, clubs are for Berlin, what's the impact coming out of this, how important is that we've got a Berghain and a Tresor and a Watergate and stuff like this. Sometimes you really have to, yeah, because you have, you have to know they never they've never been there, and they cannot really imagine what it really means it's to the people. It's missionary work. To, uh, yes, for yes, for sure, it's missionary work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's really I like I like to do this. Yeah, I think the most um, interesting question for for artists is how to actually get into the program. So, what skills do you have to have as an artist? What kind of uh, creative skills or also business skills do you have to have to apply and to also succeed and uh, maybe get the funding? What are the, 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 the most important uh, things that you have to bring? Yeah. At the end, only the, the jury, the board, really knows this because they decide this. Yeah. Um, you have to apply, you have to fill out an application form, it's very simple. You have to tell us what you want to do for the next time. What's your project? You want to do a new album? Want to write down new songs? Want to do research abroad or something like this? And you have to, to send in three new tracks. And yeah, and you have to be on your way. So we are not supporting the very, very young coming from school or still uh, at school, okay, we are supporting very young artists right now, 20 and 21, okay. But um, they, they are doing music for a long time, so they started very, very early. And we are not supporting the big ones, the big, big bands, very successful bands or artists. So all of them, they have to be on the way. Mm -hmm. And um, they have to, yeah, they just have to, how to say, in a way, they have to be, um, um, 
how, what did you say? What did you say? What, what was the question? How are they? Like what kind of skills you have yeah. to bring? Do you, is it, is it especially difficult, for instance, to fill in the application? Do you have to be very um, business savvy, meaning you have to fill in a budget plan and uh, all this? Yes, you have to, you have to do all tasks. of this, but it's mm -hmm. very, it's very simple. Mm -hmm. You have to make a budget plan. You just have to, to tell us what do you want to do with 10,000 euros? Mm -hmm. um, what is the project? And uh, one of our members of the jury said last year, um, for him it's about a bit like what kind of music do we want to hear tomorrow? So it's a bit like hearing, yeah, really hear some, something new, maybe you never heard before, or really a project that's really interesting. And I think what's really new is that we give the money directly to the artist, so it's not going to a label, a management, or someone else. It's really going to the artist, and they decide what to do, and at the end, they just have to make a small description at the end of the year what they did with the money. And that's really cool because all the artists we supported right now, they always come along for a coffee and tell us, so we don't have to tell them, please tell us what you're doing, because they really like, they're just phoning us, sending emails, or coming around, or sending photos, and telling us what they are on right now. So that's really cool, yeah. Since you're only in your second year right now, how, how big is the feedback so far, and what do you think will be happening in the future? How many more artists do you think will apply? I think right now it's about 200 only for this um, scholarship residency program, for the, for the projects much more. Um, and as I said, it's about 15, 14 we, we have each year supporting. Um, maybe we will get more money to, to spend more money directly to, to help the artists. It's really maybe also important to say that all the projects we are supporting are in a way coming back to the artists with money or with um, the, uh, the possibility to, to, to play concerts and to get money. So we are really into this. We really love the artists. So we want the people to pay the artists. So sometimes people ask us and say, oh, you know so many artists and can they play? We don't have any money and then we say, no, we don't give you any contact because we want the artists to be paid, whatever they do, because every technician, everybody is really paid. And why don't you want to pay the artists, even if it's a charity? It's really when they are not Rammstein, okay, or something like this. Yeah, you know that sentence. If you are a musician in Berlin or a DJ, you know this thing. You know it would be great if you play, but we really have no money. Yeah, that's what we all hear a lot. Yeah. Um, but that's also, I think, one of the basic reasons why you actually started this program, because we have a lot of artists, um, but it's really difficult to find the good ones and then really um, support them. Do you already have feedback from artists where the help from last year really got them to a new place, to a new step? Yeah, that's really, that's really cool. We had, uh, we supported Fia, She's, she came from Australia. She, she told us this year, and sh we supported her last year, and she said that with our help she could um, finish her album, and um, we told a lot of people about Fia, and so she made a lot of concerts and festivals, and she's, she told us that she's right now really making her money out of this. Okay. So that's the only job, do it, just being a musician. And that's really cool. And right now we've got, we've got some artists like Black Cracker or Larry, and they really they play at Berlin, uh, Berlin Festival and Berlin Music Week right now, and um, they are really growing up. And sometimes it's just, they just need not, they don't, do not need so much money, it's just a little money to help them to, to, to go the next step. And then um, sometimes it's really working. And that's really cool to see because nobody really knows we are not God. Nobody knows if we, the jury takes the, make the, the right decision with the artist. And um, even if someone not very, not famous next year, that's not our mission to, to have famous uh, people um, uh, for Rolling Stone or whatever. It's just about, um, we wanna help them and we trust them and we think they are good and they have to ch choose their way of life for the next year, so decide if they want to be musicians still in two years or three or whatever. 
Before we look um, further into um, the ways artists want or should be supported, I would like to go to my um, other speakers. First of all, um, Vanessa, you... Um, wait, I have to do this, otherwise I'm getting lost. You are um, working for the PRS for Music Foundation, and in case you don't know, the PRS is the English equivalent to the GEMA, uh, I would like to leave that um, uncommented, otherwise we just go into a different um, uh, discussion. We don't want that now, but just uh, as, as, a, as a fact is uh, a, a company like the GEMA can actually do something good. And <laughs> this is what we, what we have here. Vanessa, could you describe uh, what your foundation is doing and um, what your work is and what happened in the last uh, couple of years? Sure, so um, PRS for Music Foundation is the leading charitable funder of new music, but we also like to operate as a development agency, really, and we want to be a catalyst for the development of new music and artist development as well. So um, we were set up in 2000 by PRS. Um, they wanted to create an independent charity that could fairly distribute the, a donation from them to music across all genres. I think previously the donations from the Collecting Society had mainly gone to classical music, so it's kind of echoing what Katcha was saying about where any kind of charitable money tends to go. And since we were founded, we've really kind of grown what we do because many other funders trust us as the ultimate channel for reaching emerging artists and you know really talented young composers and songwriters in the UK. So one of the things that I've been most excited about in the last couple of years is that we've launched the first talent development fund for artists working in pop music in England by being awarded half a million pounds from Arts Council England, which is obviously the main public funder of the arts in, in, in England. Um, so that's been a really big change for us because we've been able to demonstrate to artists and bands how they can really come direct to us and we are listening to them about how they want to use this funding. So it's very open in that we ask people to submit a business plan that is basically showing us how they're going to get from here to here and they all have to be on a kind of tipping point and about to break through to a different level in their career. So many of them will apply for help with decent recordings, touring, marketing, promotion, but it could also be um, more imaginative ways of using the funding. So somebody wanted to fly to LA to work with a particular producer they hadn't been able to work with before. Another electronic musician wanted to take time out to work on his orchestration skills so that he could you know, improve the quality of his mixes and things. So really broad range of activities that we fund. And I think what I'm finding really interesting in the UK at the moment is that finally, all sorts of different funders are recognising the importance of supporting artists who might be signed to an indie label but actually are no better off than a classical composer who's always kind of felt entitled to public funding and also got quite a lot of it. So there are new funding streams coming through. The government have given three million to music export now. Um, we've got this funding for artist development. There's a new loan scheme for small indie labels that's being delivered by AIM who are here also at the conference. So I think one of the big challenges with all of that is to make sure that that we're all really good at signposting people to the right funds because I think now it's about getting the information out there to the right people and making sure that we help everyone kind of identify their progression routes. Yeah. Um, and as a foundation, like um, Catcher and the Music Board, we only support people who are actually making a career out of music. So we're not working with education or you know young people who are kind of into music as a hobby. But within that professional span, there's quite a lot of different levels. So we've got an open fund for artists and bands who are at the beginning stages of their career. Um, then we've got uh, Momentum, which is for ones that are really looking like they're going to make it commercially, I suppose, but are never likely 
Well, at least at the moment, they're not signed by a major, but perhaps our funding could help them to become more investment ready. And just to give you an example, Kindness is one of the artists that we funded through Momentum, and he's uh, playing tomorrow night at Berlin, at uh, First We Take Berlin. And I think he's performing content from the new album, which is what we've helped to fund. So, that so you be, all go yeah. there? <laughs> yeah, that should be a great gig. He's really changed his direction. Um, and then apart from these talent development schemes we also think about what artists need to do creatively and sometimes that means just taking time out of the kind of uh, treadmill of, of having to tour all the time or whatever so we support with the British Council residencies overseas so we run four residencies in China um, and one of those has been um, completed by Imogen Heap who is a pretty well-known pop artist another example of someone who used to be on a major isn't on a major anymore, is now completely taking care of her own career in a very DIY kind of fashion. And um, one of the tracks on her new album was completely composed with sounds taken from the city in China that she was living in for six weeks. And her video is completely populated with all just kind of p citizens of the city that she met that she wanted to kind of... Uh, present in her video as a day in the life of this city. So there's some different ways, I think, in which you can support talent development. Some of them don't necessarily have anything to do with business results, and others are much more clearly linked to, you know, how people can make their careers sustainable. 68% um, of all the people who apply to Momentum are in full-time or part-time jobs other than music. Yeah. They are all earning less than £12,000 a year, and a lot of them live in London. So, the, you know, that's a really difficult situation to be in. Um, How yeah. many artists uh, have applied, for instance, um, last year, just in comparison to yeah. the music board? Well, we've had, I think what we've realised, and it's a good thing, is that we've completely identified a massive gap in funding that is really needed. And in the first deadline for eight grants, we had 500 applications. So, and across one year of that fund, it's been about sort of 1,300 applications for 30 to 40 slots. So... At the moment, we've reached a point of saturation where the success rate is about 10% on average across all schemes. Uh, for some of them, it's a bit lower than that. So I think um, for those of you I saw putting your hands up saying you'd applied for things and you didn't get through, I mean, the message we give to people is that it's always worth trying again and maybe even make sure that you're going for the right kind of funding because quite often the people who apply to Momentum We, we kind of recognise with the independent experts that actually, you know, make the decisions for us. We recognise that they would benefit from other kinds of funding, but they're not ready for that fund yet. So I think another part of our service is to make sure we give useful feedback. And, and the other thing, I mean, thinking about being a politician, uh, me too, I'm not a politician, but I think as a funder, you can do things that give out pretty strong messages. So one other scheme that we launched three years ago is called Women Make Music, and that's um, responding to the fact that amongst the membership of PRS, which is a membership body for uh, all songwriters and composers in the UK, only 14% of them are women. So it was an experiment to see what would happen if we launched a fund that was called Women Make Music for any kind of musician. So it could be pop, electronic, rock, classical, jazz, folk. And what happened was we had about, I think it was 750 applic uh, applications for what in the end ended up being about 90 slots across three years. And 85% of those people had never applied to us before. And they could have done, because we have a fund for individuals, but it took us kind of calling directly to them, this is for women, uh, uh, that gave them the confidence to come forward. And I've even had feedback from some of the most talented women who applied, who said they just weren't sure that they would get it if they'd applied for the other scheme, or they weren't sure that they were good enough. So I think it's, t it's kind of teaching us a lot about some of those barriers for women in the music industry as well. Just a short question to Katja. How do, can you recall how many of your um, applicants were actually female? Um, we've got a lot. Yeah. And we say that we um, support 50-50, mm -hmm. male and female. 
when we support and also in our jury and in my, my board members and everything, I really into this and we supported like this female pressure project and a lot of different uh, things and again this year and uh, yeah, so we, tr we, I think because Berlin is the city for queer music yeah. for sure and so we are very much into this yeah. but in a very natural yeah. way I would say. So you're so not considering to um, make up a fund extra for women, it's uh, nothing no. that really is in need? No, because we say, no, because we make it 50-50 mm -hmm. and I, I tell my, my board members and my jury that they have to decide like this. It's always the quality first of all, but then we say, okay, please have a look and have a look at this woman and blah, blah, blah. So, and that's really nearly, nearly working. But still, it's, it's still a very, very big topic yeah. because in m most of the panels or discussions or big meetings, I am the only woman. And when I tell the people where the other women, when they build up something new and they say, because you are here, and I said, no, I'm, just, I'm the only, that's not, that's not yeah. asked. And then they said, yeah, but they are no women. And I said, no, they are this, 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 and this, and then, so it's always like, like this. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't want to turn this into a um, men-female discussion, no, but I think it's just a, an interesting, um, interesting point to see that here in Berlin, we actually have a kind of a balanced, um, uh, uh, male, female applicants' uh, numbers, right? So that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. um, what, what I find, found uh, really interesting about your project is when, when I think of uh, the UK and the UK pop music, uh, um, then for me, this is like, you know, historically one of the most vivid and interesting pop culture anyways, and they always had this kind of, you know, it was all, er Global. It was always a global um, uh, phenomena, and and the whole world wants English music. So I was like, why is it now uh, um, important to have funding to support artists? What changed? Yeah, this is where I have to be very careful that I don't offend any anybody who works for a major record label. Um, w there's been quite a lot of debate in the press about the launch of Momentum, our talent development fund, because there is an implication, I suppose, with the fund that the labels are not investing as much in talent as they used to. And the way I see it is that this fund is a complement to what the majors are doing. I think the reason it has to exist is because we as a foundation and I personally as well feel very passionately about the breadth of talent in the UK and the diversity of new music that's being created and the majors can't they just can't embrace that full diversity because not all of it will be commercially sustainable in the way that they need it to be now to keep the businesses going and obviously I think you know we all know that changes in the way that uh, music is consumed, etc., have meant that there's just been a lot less money flying around than there used to be. Um, I mean, things. what's been really interesting with this fund is that there is still quite a dominance um, around applications from London as opposed to anywhere else in England. And I was in Liverpool the other day, which is another city that has a great tradition for music, obviously, I'm obviously, sure, yes. sure you know. And at the moment, it's getting really exciting. There's some really cool young artists. There's a woman called Lapsley, who's about 17, uh, inspired by James Blake and the XX, but she's definitely one to watch, and I think she's going to take off. And there are a few other acts like that. Um, but still, I, was, I, I heard from someone who's based there that... There used to be a period when you would suddenly feel that there's a crowd of people from London in town checking out a new act. You know, there's been a buzz around someone and the A&R people would go outside of London to pick up new artists. And this person who's a very strong kind of music industry rep in Liverpool said that hasn't actually happened for about five years in a big way. So there's... So I think in talking about the diversity, we really want to look at what's happening outside of London, but also what's happening across all kinds of music, some of which may really be much more suited to an indie label 
And, and those labels we're actually inviting to come to us as long as they can kind of make the case as to why they need our funding. So they're having to invest, but we're also collaborating with them in that sense, I suppose. So you kind of work like an A&R as well? Which yeah, well, <laughs> I, I think we want to avoid that because we recognise that that's the job of the labels and, the, and everyone who's actually working in the industry. But I think we just want to be there as an extra form of support and also... It's kind of kudos for the artists who get selected because there's so much competition. It's actually really great for them to be part of a scheme like Momentum. And we're also building other partnerships. So Deezer is contributing s support to Momentum and they've created an app and a digital platform for the artists who get selected. And some of them have increased their online um, traffic enormously thanks to that partnership because there's a kind of financial yeah. incentive D to do that. To clarify, that. Deezer is an on-demand radio like uh, Deezer uh, is a Spotify French version of Spotify. Okay, just yeah. in case you so don't know Deezer because it's not so common here. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, and we also partner recently with BBC Introducing so that the acts are going to get broadcast opportunities when we support them to perform overseas. So we can bring other additional benefits. And the other piece of feedback that um, Anna and I were talking yeah. about is the, the kind of professional development that's implied when you have to put together a business plan mm -hmm. and a case for funding. And we got some feedback even from people who've been rejected that it was really useful to go through that okay. process. So that was a really good thing to yeah. hear about. But I mean, unlike, I think, with Anna, we're not yeah, doing hands-on, um, <laughs> we're not doing the hands-on mentoring ourselves, yeah. but we're kind of getting as close as we can to that as a pretty small independent funder. Anna, speaking of business, business plans for artists, I think this is also one of uh, your um, um, prominent uh, uh, ways of supporting artists. Please tell us about your project and maybe um, also about uh, the um, situation in the US where artist funding is not, not a tradition, right? Yeah, that's definitely, that's definitely true. It's a major difference with um, a lot of the European countries that have actively supported lots of forms of culture, including music, for um, a long time. We have a much more um, uh, market-based uh, approach to culture. Um, so uh, I'm here from Zoo Labs, which is in California, um, Oakland. We run a music accelerator. We call it the Zoo Labs Music Residency. It's uh, somewhere between a traditional artist residency, where you're given time and space and resources to create new work, um, and a business accelerator, which being from the Bay Area, we are sort of steeped in um, this idea of the startup, you know, um, and uh, there are a lot of accelerators and incubators that support startups and help them get off the ground. And so what we saw was a real need for um, teams of music making entrepreneurs to be supported and given the tools, a lot of the similar tools that are used for startup companies, but we really, we, we, we we took the best and then we tweaked you know, the rest of it and really have been developing a curriculum for musicians. Um, and uh, so to, to tell you a little more about the actual residency, these, uh, these teams, they come, they live at the studio. Uh, they spend their mornings in workshops and getting mentorship and then their afternoons in the studio with an engineer. So it's all expenses paid. We're a nonprofit. Um, and uh, so we get our funding from private donors. And uh, at the end of the residency, they come away with new high quality recorded songs. Um, and they also come away with a business plan that they've developed um, thanks to these workshops. So we really, uh, part of what we find really original about our approach is both this, it's um, a dual focus on the art and the business. And more and more, and this is you know, what, what we're hearing um, right here from, from all of us, is that uh, musicians are really having to take responsibility for their business more than ever before, because the traditional channels of, of artist support have, have, you know, they've been in flux and they've really been crumbling. So uh, we think it's 
it's great for them to be empowered with these tools to do business, and really they're doing it already. I mean, musicians are, are, have been entrepreneurial forever, since the beginning of time. Um, so that's not a new thing, but I think a lot of um, the channels that are available to them have, are new. And um, we, we, one of our major um, ethos is that we don't have answers, we um, help you ask the right questions. So we're not trying to give a formula of how to succeed in music. Uh, we are trying to bring together really smart people, including the musicians themselves, to develop these future-facing models that will help them build sustainable careers. What did you learn so far? What do artists need the most? What is like the, the, the most efficient thing for them <laughs> to, to take uh, out of these residencies? Um, that is a really good question and I don't think I have a clear answer because uh, what we've found is that bands, um, and we actually, we like to call them teams, especially in our, in our residency, um, because sometimes they're bands, you know, like traditional, you know, four musicians or something, but sometimes they're a different configuration and we really embrace that. Maybe it's a producer and a singer and a manager, you know, so it doesn't have to be that specific configuration. But uh, there are a lot of new ways to go about um, building a career. And so for us, what we feel like is the most important is this idea of mentorship and this idea of innovation. And so that innovation can come from different places. And for what we're doing, we're trying to break open their creativity, unleash their creativity on the business model. <laughs> but uh, so, so we go through um, tools instead of, so the, the, I think the most efficient way we, if I were to answer the question directly, is to give them a new perspective on their music business. Um, and one that is in line with what they want to do. So if they want to create really original video content because that's how they feel like their audience is engaging with them, then they need to develop an idea, you know, maybe this is, um, somewhere where they go out and they look for a partner that will give them the, the funding to do this. Um, and I think that's maybe one of the differences with what um, I've been hearing Vanessa and Katya talk about, is that we're not actually um, giving money to the artists. Um, and that was a decision we made early on. Uh, the, the owners of the recording studio where we run out of, um, they make the joke that they know a hundred ways not to support an artist because they've been, you know, for the last uh, eight years, they've been running this studio and they always wanted to have a, an idea of music incubation. Um, and if you ask an artist what they need, they often say money, but there's also a lot more. Um, and I mean, both of you, uh, of your organizations offer this kind of mentorship as well. But so, you know, we said it needs to be more than money. Um, it needs to really be giving them skills and also, um, you know, the the, studio time to record because that's very expensive. So we, we really offer um, non-monetary non support. What would you say, what is the most um, important need of an artist? What, is the, what are they asking for the most? I think the most important is just to the, um, the possibility to be creative. Mm -hmm. Just make, can, that you can do whatever you want to do. And sometimes, because I studied acting, I was an actress in my former life, and I had to do a lot of very strange jobs to, to support myself. And that was very much okay for me. And I never would have the idea to ask someone to give, me, to give money to me to, to be an actress or to do my theater work or whatever um, for a while. And then after a while, I was really like, Phew. so it was really exhausting. And so, I don't know, I really, I think it's just fair that you, that you bring on, uh, on one level artists coming from the, in Germany called higher culture, like opera, blah, 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 authors, filmmakers, and pop musicians. And just if we have the money from the government, because it's governmental money, it's tax money in Berlin coming from the, from the city of Berlin. So to, to, to give it directly to the artists and not to, because it's not, you know, it's not 
private funding or whatever. It's not, it's not a sponsorship. It's really tax money. And so giving back this money to the people really creating Berlin and what, it, what Berlin really is and um, with these new ideas and creativity then go to the, the biggest clubs or whatever, concert halls. So I think that's just, it's just fair. And um, because we do not support the very young artists, I really can say that I really trust the artists that they, that they do the very best with the money we, we are giving them. I was just going to say that I think it really depends on what stage an artist is at. Um, so I do think there are different needs, and, and that's partly why we've launched Momentum, because I think actually at that point where you've been through quite a lot of experimentation with your music, where you've started to build a, a kind of following online, where you've got a bit of a team around you, it gets to a point where you just actually want money to be able to do what you do better. So to improve the quality of your recording or to improve the marketing that you can do around your live performance or to improve the pr production value of your tour. Um, so I think what we actually discovered is that the big gap in the UK was not so much the grassroots where there are a number of agencies kind of helping with mentoring, etc., which are equally important, and we also help fund them. But it's also about, as you were saying, giving money directly to the artists and their teams so that they can just raise the game of what they're doing and kind of break through. So I think it, it does depend a bit on where they're at. And those people who've had that kind of big commercial success and are kind of trying to find a way back in, I think that's where it's more about time and space and new inspiration that helps them get their music back on track. Um, is there any interest in a Q&A, dear audience? If yes, uh, let me know uh, by raising your hand if you have a question or something is not clear or you want to apply right now. No? <laughs> there. Uh, wait, the microphone is on its way. <laughs> Thanks very much. Um, just a question for Anna. Um, you said that there are private investors um, you get the money from, which is obviously a great thing. Um, and you are non-profit, which is great as well. So what are their interests there? Are they then a part of the business, uh, just your business or the musician's business? How does that work? Yeah. Um well, first and foremost, these are people who uh, are passionate about music and really interested in um, supporting the discovery of new models for, for contemporary music. So um, I think that passion is what leads them to um, invest in our, in our programs. Um, and second, for the nonprofit, we have, um, so on, on all the music that's created in the residency, we have a publishing administration deal with the songs. So we have 10% that is owned by the um, nonprofit. So if something is to come of some of the songs that come out of there, the money will go back into funding projects and new you know, music creation um, in the future. So I think you know, we, it's a very modest um, exchange, but that way we stay in touch with the music that's created in our residency. That makes did that answer your question? Yeah. Anything? Oh, back there. Thank you so much. Thank you. I <laughs> appreciate it. Um, I guess this question is for Anna one more time. Um, just a matter of understanding, um, if you could just uh, explain the term incubator, I'm kind of unaware unfamiliar. Yeah, definitely. So it's interesting because we've decided to call ourselves an accelerator as of late. Um, but incubator and accelerator are, are oftentimes interchanged um, uh, when talking about this. It's, it's, um, it's a program to support early stage development of um, a project. So uh, I think we've chosen Accelerator because what we do is extremely intense and immersive. We, we have, it's two weeks, and we're actually going to try out a 10-day residency in November. 
So it's very quick, but what they learn in that time is really meant to be a launch pad for um, you know, the future of their projects and things that will, they will be able to use in the years um, after they do our program. So the idea of an incubator is really just, um, it's, a, it's a sort of a, a safe space to grow and accelerate it being more of like a launch pad. But um, it's oftentimes it comes from, uh, we usually see it in the tech world. There's a ton in the United States of these incubators and accelerators that are um, supporting startups. Uh, and um, it's really interesting to us because nobody's doing that for contemporary, for music, you know, or the arts in general. So um, we want to apply some of those things to help the musicians that are running their own business already and um, want those same tools to, to become more successful. Was that answering your question? Yeah? yeah? Okay, thank you. Uh, anyone else? No. Well, then uh, let's spend the last minutes uh, in thinking about the future. <laughs> um, is there any trend that you can see? Is, is there any uh, thing that you wish to change uh, in, your, in your funds for the future or that has to change because the, the face of music industry is changing so rapidly? What would you say is, uh, is your way for the next, let's say, four or five years, each of you, in a, in maybe shortly, so we... I'll say one, one thing real quick that comes to mind um, that I didn't really mention before because we're focused right now on music, but we're really interested in bringing in music tech startups as well. Um, and we really want to build a community where the music and the music tech communicates very effectively because we're seeing an explosion of music apps and this and that and that, you know, but um, are they really helping the artist get more in touch with their fans and, you know, maybe potentially also, you know, this big question of monetizing music and, you know, how we make that relationship sustainable as well, I think is a big question. So f for us, we're interested in bringing in more music tech to, you know, um, build that future together with artists. Brilliant topic for a panel next year, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I think for us, because we're beginning to get the results of the evaluations for the fund momentum that we're running, and I was talking earlier about the demand, and I think the biggest challenge is really, really deepening this debate about how pop music is great art alongside all the other kinds of art that's always received public funding before. Unfortunately, our Arts Council has a, um, a vision which is called Great Art for Everyone, and the chief exec of Arts Council England at the moment is a real fan of indie pop music and he really believes in it. Um, so I'm just hoping that we can keep deepening that debate, um, make a case for increased funding because you heard earlier what that demand is like, um, and just to make it feel a much more kind of normal part of the status quo um, and not necessarily to talk about it in terms of you know, some people are talking about it in terms of market failure or talking about it as being relating to a problem in the industry, but actually it's also relating to a kind of uh, a, mis a mistake, if you like, in the past or something that I don't think was really balanced before. So I think that's one really big thing for us. And then the other big thing that I'm interested in is making sure the balance of funding is really scrutinised between what goes to individual artists and what goes to organizations because across all music genres including classical at the moment I think composers are feeling a bit left out because they always have to wait for opportunities to come from the organizations that receive all the public funding so I think creating the right spread of support across individual artists and bands and the infrastructure too is something that needs to be looked at and kind of fine-tuned yeah, or it would be very nice if we could say in, in, in Germany that we've got contemporary music and that means really pop music like in, in England, for example, because in, as, I, as I said before, we still have got this gap between high culture music and lower music, the bit 
uh, yeah, the bit dirty pop music scene and techno techno stuff and stuff like this. So that would be very very cool if we can just say, okay, we mean contemporary music, and that really means pop music and pop culture. Um, so that I don't have to be a missioner so much, maybe in the future. Um, and then for sure, we, we, it would be cool to have something like what, what Vanessa is creating and doing with uh, PRS for Music uh, Foundation, something like GEMA should maybe think about. I know for sure they give a lot of money to the composers, artists and stuff like this. They have a lot of money, but maybe to think about something like a foundation um, supporting um, contemporary music, um, pop culture in a way would be cool. Um, would be really cool. Uh, in a way, they 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 support Initiative Musik. To be honest, they they help them with their costs to, to for their office, and so they do this already. Um, for sure, we yes, we can need, we need more money if we compare our foundation to other foundations for classical music or or filmmaking or whatever. But also, we do not need only money. We also need in Berlin, that's very special for Berlin, because the city is really growing and growing and growing. So we also need the space for the artists, and we need affordable space so that people really can do what they want to do. And so that's a... But it's really... It's, it's going on a very good discussion in Berlin right now. I think we are on a way to that everybody really gets to know, okay, this is really, it is important. So many people are coming to Berlin just because of the clubs, the music scene, the techno scene, all this. And so, we, yeah, maybe... The in importance the of this, uh, yeah. this part of Berlin has to be politically uh, embraced. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they, are on a, they are on their way. Yeah. But they are on yeah. their way. Yeah, I would like to encourage all of you to apply wherever you come from. If you're an artist, don't be, you know, scared off by the bureaucratics or whatever. It's pretty easy, especially, I have to say, the, the um, website for the music board is very easy, very nice to go through. It's uh, not so difficult to understand how to apply. So don't be taken aback by, you know, budget plans or whatever. You can do it. And thank you for listening. I hope you have a good time and see you later. Bye. Thank you.